Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to worship. I know the bulletin says coffee hour next week, but I happen to know there's coffee hour downstairs today. <laughs> so please join us after church for coffee hour. There is a vestry meeting on Monday the 20th. That's a couple of weeks away. And the day before is the choir's closing service. That's one of those Sundays of the church year you want to get here early so you can hear the beautiful music that the choir has prepared. As Greg always says, you do not want to miss it. It's a real delight. And you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> that too. Please remember to support people in need the Salvation Army locally for our food pantry and our egg crates. I see, Ken, you're going to be carrying egg crates for quite a while. <laughs> Always. <laughs> That's okay. For relief to ERD for people of the Ukraine. To the SPCA. They are always looking for pet things and used collars. So if you get to the point you've got to throw some out, they can be well used to dry off pets. I'm thinking of washing dogs and cats and how many towels that could take. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Ken? I know that you've spoken about it, but uh, my experience is, is that the Salvation Army is continuing to extremely need non-perishable food. So anything that you can bring in, I would gladly take over. I'm going to start my uh, Tuesday morning run again. Okay. Uh, I'll be doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Anything else? Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Dad, UTO? I realize it sounds almost mercenary this morning. <clears throat> I want to thank God for the estate of Lee Gridley. It has given monetary donations to a number of local institutions. And I'm sure each in their own way will use that money to benefit mankind. So thanks be to God. I would like to give thanks for the opportunity to be back home two weeks in a row. That's a really wonderful thing. morning is from Lift Every Voice and Sing, number 112, Come Holy Ghost. Stand as you are able, please. Is that real like this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I had the wrong page. I'm sorry, folks.
before you for a scribe. Two, beginning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. For the last time this year, Alleluia! Christ has risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Let us all pray together. Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Bless us all to our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Asia, 
and Phrygia and Amphilia and Egypt and parts of Libya. Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, Eh, they're just filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would be, that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your saints may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons 
or add. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks be God. The refrain for the response for all song is in your bulletin.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Lord, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Since you've already heard one sermon, I'm going to take the liberty of being a little short today. <laughs> Two is sometimes a bit much, right? <clears throat> We're here today to celebrate the coming of God's Holy Spirit to all the believers gathered in Jerusalem. I suspect we know the story pretty well. The gathered believers, the rushing wind, the tongues as a fire, the formerly timid disciples all of a sudden speaking to the crowds in many different languages. We've worn red to church on this day to symbolize the Spirit. Once we even pinned paper tongues of fire on each other, and another time we had red balloons here to, for the church's birthday. So we've celebrated all that. What we haven't celebrated so much is that Peter preached a great sermon that day, which explained Jesus Christ, God's only Son, through Old Testament prophecies and convinced 3,000 persons to be baptized. Not sure 3,000 people have ever even heard me preach, <laughs> let alone been convinced. It was miracle upon miracle that day. No question about it. But sometimes I think the miracles are all that we see on this Pentecost. Maybe it's because we're so awestruck by what happened. But there's more that's hidden in this day. 
The Holy Spirit was not completely strange to the Jews throughout history. They'd known of some people who were in touch with God's Spirit. Think of the prophets like Moses, for example. But the average Jew didn't have that connection. On Pentecost, that changed forever. Because the Holy Spirit was poured out on all who were present. All who were in the room. Every single one. Men, women, children, infants. It was indeed what Joel had prophesied all those years before. That God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. The young, the old, the men, the women, the slaves, the free. And then at the conclusion of Peter's sermon, God's spirit was poured out once more upon all those devout Jews who had gathered because of the commotion of languages. It didn't matter where they came from. What mattered was that they worshipped God. And they all did. That's why they were in Jerusalem for the Jewish festival, also named Pentecost. How amazing that God would send his spirit on all those people. How amazing that all of them could receive the Spirit. That they could see and hear and know. Think of all the barriers that must have been broken down that day. How all the nation was embraced. How social, gender, and economic divisions were all overcome by the gift. Holy Spirit. Best of all, this was not a one-time thing. This promise of the Holy Spirit extends even to us. As Peter put it, for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord calls to him. Two thousand years later, the Spirit is still being poured out, even among us, few as we are. When we receive the Holy Spirit, which we all did at baptism, as Peter said, we are changed, just the way Jesus' first followers were changed on Pentecost, from disciples, which means followers, to apostles, which means those who are sent. There's a big difference between being a follower, who obviously needs a leader, and being one who is sent. So the Holy Spirit's not a gift that we receive and then tuck away all wrapped up like some precious wedding gift we don't know quite what to do with. I don't know about you, cellar or attic, but I have a few of those. The Holy Spirit does not remove us from all the struggles of this life, because the whole point of receiving the Spirit, having the Spirit with us, is that we are moved. Not moved out, but moved. Since we are now apostles, it's our turn to act, our turn to carry the good news out to others. I love the words of the New Zealand night prayer invocation. Eternal spirit, flow through our being and open our lips that our mouths may proclaim your praise. And there's a contemporary hymn that's one of my very favorites, even though the Episcopal Church doesn't have it, that has this line, Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. Wow. Aren't we all too often 
Placid. We need to be told, get up, get out of our pews. Bring Jesus to all of the people around us. We all know <coughs> way too well that our world is not yet filled with God's kingdom. We have a long way to go. There's a lot of work to be done. But just like the plea I received from our local fire department this week, the Holy Spirit says the same thing. God has work for everyone, regardless of age or physical or other abilities. So whether the Spirit comes to us as a spirit of gentleness in a still small voice, or as a spirit of tempest, whirlwind, earthquake, and fire, purging all that blocks God's purpose. Whichever way the Spirit comes, it doesn't really matter. It's all one Spirit, bringing the living water of Jesus to be with us for all time as God's children. And so, this day and every day, we pray together, living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed is found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, life for life, True God, true God, begotten and unmade, of one being of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people for today. Filled with the promised Holy Spirit, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need, saying, Hear us, O God. And responding, Save, Save us, O Lord. Pour out your Spirit upon the church that we may be filled with the proclamation of your grace for the sake of the whole world. Bless Michael, our presiding bishop. Steve, our provisional bishop. Carol, our officiant and priest of the day. Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. Pour out your spirit upon the earth to renew the face of the ground, that all may be fed and nourished by the abundant resources you provide for all your people. Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. Pour out your spirit upon the nations, that all leaders, judges, and peacekeepers may stand against oppression and seek peace throughout our world. Bless all members of our armed forces. Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. 
Pour out your spirit upon those who suffer, that they may know healing, hope, and joy. We pray for all children, that they may never experience abuse, neglect, exploitation, or gun violence. We pray for healing for Don, Sherry, Polly, Lisa, Mary Lou, Penny, Alfred, Tomoko and Bruce Duke, Kathy Whitty, Marilyn, Josie, Cheryl, Jason, and anyone you wish to name at this time. Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. Pour out your Spirit upon this congregation, that we may keep your commandments and reveal your grace through ministries, ministries that serve this community and the world. Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. Pour out your Spirit upon all who mourn, that your promise of everlasting life and peace makes our hearts sing, even in the face of death. We pray for those who have died, especially Hear us, O God. Save us, O Lord. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for your praise, so that we are always ready to respond to those in need. Accept our prayers and answer them according to your good and perfect will. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share each peace. 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 Our offertory song this morning is from Lift Every Voice and Sing. Song number 111. Come now, fount of every blessing. <clears throat>
just a moment before we begin Eucharistic Prayer B. I wanted to let everyone know that Bruce Duke is Phil's son who lives in Alaska. Tomoko is dealing with a rare and metastatic cancer. And even though they live in Alaska, being treated at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. And Bruce is struggling to accept and deal with. So they ask please for our prayers for healing. Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, which is found in page 367. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices of angels and archangels and with all the company in heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your sins 
We may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the first Lord of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Let us conclude together by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now.
Let us pray together the post communion prayer found at the bottom of page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Our closing song this morning, I lift every voice and sing. Spirit of the Living God, number 115. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.
adults coming in. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what we're going to do just a few minutes. So. Kids, but see the thing is, it's so recent that it didn't even strike me as being incorrect. I was like, oh yeah, kids, that's incorrect. <laughs> well, compared to the rest, of us, you know, your hair older than. <laughs> you can come down this way. You know. Okay. Yeah.